review for a gaming store, one star. Tonight, I came to Adventure Games expecting to play D&D. It was my third time joining this group of individuals I'd come to like, and I always enjoyed our sessions. I chose to leave shortly after arriving, however, because the owner, Blank, decided to shout at us and act like a child in front of his entire establishment about a conversation we had last week that he considered inappropriate. This made more than one patron feel quite uncomfortable, I'm sure. He was completely without tact and didn't care to hear our side of the story even though some of the group has been playing there for years without incident and now they're no longer welcome. If reviews have any power, then I hope this one stings, owner, because neither I nor my friends will be frequenting your place of business any longer. And then the owner replied, You're correct. We did deem the conversation that your D&D group had last week about beating up women and getting around the strip club's no-touch rule so you could assault those women was inappropriate. We have a strict no-tolerance policy about such matters and both players who engaged in this conversation admitted they were in the wrong. Their actions were a clear violation of our store's code of conduct and the rules set forth by Wizards of the Coast, so there was no need for us to hear anyone else's side of the story. I'm sorry that the owner's reaction made you uncomfortable. Maybe you can begin to understand how the 13-year-old girl and her father felt when they were put in such an uncomfortable situation that they got up and left during the middle of a session. We've continued to have problems with this group for several years, which I'm guessing they forgot to mention to you. However, those problems pale in comparison to the horrible things that were said by not only the players in the group, but also the DM, who's supposed to be leading the group and being responsible for the session. Since we work very hard to make our space one where everyone, especially women, feel safe and welcome, we feel it's in everyone's best interest that you and your friends do not return to our store. Our next Reddit post is from Big Joint. We've had a bunch of family issues lately. My mom is disabled due to a stroke, and my dad had a traumatic brain injury a month ago, leaving my sister as the primary caretaker of her household and my parents. I live about two hours away, so I help whenever I can. My sister has one card that she uses to haul her family, her husband and three kids, and she relies on it every day to get the kids to school and pick them up. Sunday night, she was coming back from getting groceries when her car just died. Like, dead dead. It had trouble starting, and if it did start, it would run for about three seconds and then just clip off. Her husband and a cop pushed it off the highway, and later they towed it back to their house. On Monday, she called the dealership that she bought it from. The truck has about 75,000 miles on it with a 100,000 mile warranty, and it's a 2010 model. When she spoke to the service tech, she asked about a loaner vehicle to get her kids back and forth and to take my mom to doctor's appointments and such. They told her that they only give loaners to people with 2021 vehicles, and the only person who can authorize the loaner is the CEO himself. I guess they thought that they could scare my sister into shutting up about it. But they didn't realize that they were dealing with a frazzled mother who had been dealing with doctors and hospitals for months because of my dad's injury. One phone call to the CEO later, she's in his office writing a report about the service tech and signing papers on her loaner vehicle. And by the way, the CEO gave her five or six vehicles to choose from. He also said that they never had a policy that required customers to go through the CEO to get a loaner vehicle. As she was leaving, she heard the CEO on the intercom calling for the service tech to come to our next reply is from Alana Race. So first off, half of my family is Italian and half isn't. On the Italian side of my family, which the entitled mother is from, hitting other people's kids is pretty standard. But on the other side of my family, people do not tolerate it, so no one does it anymore. So I was about 16 years old at the time and living with my grandparents. My grandparents were having a little get together, but the guests were all told to stay out of my room because I wasn't feeling well. Plus my cat was in there. And with people going in and out of the house, we didn't want him to escape. There was even a sign on the door that said, please don't disturb, cat inside. Since I was sick, my temperature was all over the place. So I was in a sports bra and shorts, but my robe was right next to me. I was just laying back in my bed, trying to get a little bit of homework done before passing out again. I told my grandma to bring me some food when it was ready, and that was that. Then I heard a little knock on the door. The knock was super light, so I thought that maybe it was my grandma bringing me something to eat, not wanting to wake me up. I threw on my robe and say, yeah, come in. Next thing I know, this little gremlin comes in with chocolate all over his face and hands. It was my entitled aunt's son, a spoiled little brat. Of course, he walked right in and started touching my stuff, and he didn't close the door behind him. Luckily, I was at least able to grab my cat. Wow, cool room, the entitled kid said and tried to pick up one of my notebooks, one that was really special to me. I took it off the table before he could get fudge on it. I'm sorry, bud, but you have to go back to your mama. You're not supposed to be in here. I'm sick. The kid ignored me, still touching my stuff. I'm bored though, and you have cool stuff. I got my shots last night. I just shook my head and pointed at the door. It's rude to go into someone's room when they say no. Please just go play out there with the other kids. I'm sick, I said, firmly this time. He whined but left, slamming my door in the process. I shake my head and go over to my desk where my really fragile art supplies are. I start clearing off a spot for me to eat when I start getting really hot, so I take my robe off. The next thing I know, my door flies open and I barely manage to grab my cat. The entitled mother stood there, red-faced and fuming. My son said that you spanked him. 
What? I didn't even touch him once. I should point out that this entitled mother has a reputation for hitting kids if they step out of line, something my mom has warned with threats more than once while I was growing up. The entitled mother then stopped and looked at me, gasped, and covered her eyes as if she had never seen another woman not fully clothed before. Young lady, that is so indecent. There are children in this house. Put some clothes on. I stared at her, dumbfounded, and just shook my head. Look, entitled mom, I never hit your kid. I would never do that. And I'm sick. He shouldn't be coming in here and neither should you. What followed was her ranting for about five minutes about how I was wrong and blah, blah, blah. My stomach was starting to turn from the stress and from being sick, and I knew that I was not going to keep that down for long. I told her she has to leave now. I'm sick, and the cat that I was holding was scratching up my boobs at that point. I pointed out that I was indecent, I was trying to keep my cat from escaping, and she had no right to be there in the first place. She grabbed me, and as if I was like six years old, she started trying to spank me, even managing to get my shorts down. This woman actually smacked my butt. So I did what most people would do, I screamed for my grandfather. Papa, this woman is hitting me. Then I push her back. Her hip slams into my bed frame and I run into the hallway, slamming the door behind me while she wails at me like a banshee. Now at this point, I'm only wearing my underwear and I'm standing in front of all these guests. But what's also pretty important is that they can all see like six or seven really bright red marks on my thigh and butt. I have never seen my grandfather curse, but seeing his half-naked granddaughter with obvious marks from an assault standing in the hallway trying not to have a panic attack, he lost it. He called this entitled mother so many bad things, I lost count. A few of the other guests also came into my room to scream at her as well. I'm crying at this point, not because she hurt me, but because I was humiliated. I just wanted to get back to my room and hide from the world. But little did I know, things were gonna get worse. She started yelling, saying that my grandparents spoiled me and that I hit her kid first. By this point, her own husband was yelling, no she didn't, right in her face, but she didn't care. She pushed over my desk, breaking a lot of projects I worked really hard on, and all of my supplies spilled everywhere, all into the carpet and everything. She was immediately kicked out of the house. Her son admitted to lying, and he felt really bad for what happened. He was crying, hugging me, saying that he was super sorry, just basically being really apologetic. We never talked to the entitled mother again after that, except to get money for my stuff. She refused, but my mom told her that she would file charges for sexual assault of a minor since she pulled my pants down to hit me. She would lose her kids if we won the case, so she gave me $500 and I got to call her a B-word to her face.